in the last semester of my art degree, my both of all my tutors or like art tutors pulled me aside and they said, we're going to fail you in this last semester because you've missed three weeks of uh, school. Little did they know I was delivering a painting to The Rock overseas and that's why I was late. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Here we go. <laughs> We're on. Okay, so I'm like eating my microphone. Okay, uh, this good. is this is like I mean we we were originally um, fitness business and we've started to like really pivot I guess the podcast and and heading to a different space because we can have a broader range of conversations uh, and you're in a, such an inter- interesting space right now the art world um, which is. I don't really know much about it, but I think even more so the fact that, you know, it's probably transforming right now or mm. it's going some, th- you know, through some type of revolution. Um, but what I'll get, I'll let you introduce yourself. Um, and I think we can start with how did you actually get into the, the art space? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, yeah, so my name's Danielle and I'm 28 years old, born and bred in Melbourne, full time artist. Uh, have been on this consistent journey, I'd say, for about 10 years now. Uh, but, I mean, I've been painting drawing since I was two years old. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I did, did start at a young age and I guess, um, you know, not having a lot of technology back then was – it's something that I really – that's all I did was just pick up, do anything hands-on, draw, paint draw on the walls uh yeah like play-doh anything hands-on so yeah I guess um started painting at like nine or ten years old uh sort of had a bit of a weird journey in my early teens where I didn't touch any art at all sort of found it again in my later teens um probably got me out of my bad sort of road that I was heading down it's funny that Uh, isn't it all about that one (laughs) yeah so um Thank you, art. Um, Yeah, so, and I guess when I finished school, it wasn't really something that I thought I could make a living out of, you know, being, you know, I guess that stigma attached to artists saying, oh, I want to be an artist. Like, oh, you can't make a living out of being an artist. You're going to starve, like, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to make money when you're dead. So, yeah, so it wasn't really something I entertained until I finished school and my parents, thanks to them, said, no, give it a shot, like you should be, because I was going to study health sciences and health sciences only, and they're like, no, just humour us, do arts as well. So, um, ended up doing a double degree in health science and art, and hated studying art, irony, loved health science, so shit at science, but enjoyed it, it was great, (laughs) like, just put me little vest on, I was like, woo, like, whatever. Made you feel good. (laughs) Yeah, made me feel, like, important. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, but somehow I built up so, so, yeah, without studying art, I probably would have just left it behind and never have actually gotten into it. So, as much as I didn't enjoy the, the study aspect of it, I did. it did keep me painting. It did keep me sort of like hands-on, I guess. Uh, and, yeah, like one painting I did for a f- family friend or a friend then turned into more people asking for paintings. Um, these were just on canvases at the time. So, it got busier and busier. I gave my first like probably 20, 30 paintings away for free. And then I started charging a couple of hundred bucks and 10 years later, probably even 11 years, 12 years now, because it was when I was 18, I sort of started that. Oh yeah, 10 years, can't count, 28, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, so uh, like full-time artist, got um, uh, my murals, I've got my canvases that I still do. I work with clothing brands. I work with all sorts of different clients. Um, massive buildings I've painted Um, I've got my prints business online I've got a sip and paint business in Malvern Um, and now we're heading into this crazy sphere of you know crypto and NFTs and stuff like that too so it's just exciting never ending yeah just for everyone at home like I I I mean I just want to stress this like I, I the the work that you do is quite amazing you know, the, and, and it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's, it's fucking hectic. crazy. And I, we're not the only ones that think it. There's, you know, what, 200 odd thousand other people that follow your work. Um, but I think, I guess, like, the, the question I've got, right, as it relates to art, is what makes art valuable? 
to you, you know, I mm. mean, because I can talk from a business perspective and I'll give the stereotypical business answer, yeah, right? But I think more so from an artist perspective, what what do you think makes art valuable? Um, and, and you said you've been able to, to, to monetize it and, and turn it into a full-time career. Yeah. So you've obviously been able to unlock that, that value. Yeah. I think what I've managed to tap into is creating art that people can relate to and that's um, relevant in their life or they, you know, they feel like they want to put it up on their wall or like it's, it's up like with the trend and things like that. So I think I've really listened to my audience, what they want to see, put my own spin on it and then sort of churn that out and realize that, yeah, like people respond to it. And I guess in, you know, there's a lot of people who would argue that and say, oh, you haven't developed your own style and your own, you haven't gone down your own pathway but I've really enjoyed creating what I have. So I think that's that's honestly the bottom line is, and I'll say that to anyone aspiring to be an artist or, you know, they're on a crazy journey like I am now, as long as you're enjoying what you're creating, like who cares if you don't have a style or you don't, you know, you don't feel like you've actually, you're like, oh, I've, I've got my style now. I'm going to run with it. Like I'm, I love painting different things, you know. I go from painting trams to portraits to to animals to yeah so everything and I think that's where I see the value is just like people getting enjoyment out of the variety of things that I do paint so yeah oh back back in the day the old school ways I guess you'd put your things in a gallery and you know an artist would pass away and there go up goes the value of their work and etc etc but now I think yeah it's it's shifted and we've had to adapt to the constant changes in society i guess so with yeah. um you said that like obviously studying art kept you hands-on and stuff i imagine that like with any uni course there's a large drop drop off rate of people that actually fulfill that into a career mm. do you like what was the transition point for you to be like okay cool i've studied this thing yeah now i actually want to make it a thing that i make money from <sighs> that that's it sorry for the, the big breath um <laughs> that's a great question and it's funny that you say that because I I don't know what the figures are but anyone that I went to uni with I don't think they're a full-time artist it's the same it's like I see it in 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 my industry as well there's heaps of people that study but they're not actually five years down the track they're not doing the thing so what what made you different in that situation so I was working on my business while I was studying so I was it and it wasn't a leap I didn't take that leap of faith I didn't say I'm going to be an artist I'm going to dive straight into it it was sort of evolved so I was studying full-time I was working two jobs and I was painting basically for free on the side. So I had a few streams of incomes. Uh, I was coaching tennis and working in retail and I was studying full time. So I'd never sort of experienced that starving artist phase of trying to make it because I just made sure that I was stable in other areas so that I could enjoy my art and it wasn't that that hard slog. The hard slog has been the 10 year journey, but I, I didn't I didn't take that leap and I didn't like dive straight into it so whilst people were trying to get the best marks at university I was probably slacking off because I was doing a lot on the side I still finished with great marks and distinction average for both of my courses but I remember in the last semester of my art degree my both of all my tutors or like art tutors pulled me aside and they said we're going to fail you in this last semester because you've missed three weeks of uh, school little did they know I was delivering a painting to the rock overseas and that's why I was late mm. back I didn't say anything no none of my teachers knew that I had built up my business on the side so I just said yep like just let me fit like let's get through they didn't fail me they gave me like a 51 mm-hmm. or something like that so I just passed my last semester of university and when I finished I went and put a business card on my teacher's desk so and you, did you, did you, you, I never spoke to her again. Did you did you tell her that? So did she like you never fuck no. that's that's so good. Like for yeah. me I'm like honey. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> you no. know what I'm doing? Yeah, no. You wanna call him? <laughs> you wanna call him? <laughs> I just I was just like, I'm just gonna get through, finish it. And I did pass and, and, and yeah, look, I probably would have kicked up a stink if they didn't pass me in my last like it was five years I was at university, so I would have been pissed off because and, and it was hard because, like, I got gotten to that point where I had a lot of media outlets ca- um, contacting me at that point after meeting The Rock. And I was just like, I can't handle this right now, so I'm going to have to 
something has to give. So I didn't take on any of those opportunities just to finish those last few weeks of uni. So I did make a few sacrifices, but I basically stuck one of them up at her at the end when I'd passed everything. Yeah, fuck, and, yeah. That. So with, with that though, like obviously all of this kind of like snowballed and it happened pretty quick. Yeah. Like obviously you've done the 10 year slug, but like as you start to gain traction, that probably built up momentum pretty quickly. Definitely, yeah. For you, what was the moment where you're like, fuck, this is actually something that, like I'm talking to the rock. Like, at what point do you go, holy shit, this is actually a business that is going to service my lifestyle for the long term? It, it was probably that. Yeah. That was probably, and that at that point, um, that was six years ago now. So, that was probably about four or five years into the hard slug that I was still like, is this going to be a thing? Is it not? I don't know. I still kept chugging along at it, but I wasn't sure. Like, how do you actually see, you know... Uh, like a future in art when you're selling paintings for like 40, 50, 100 bucks. It's like, oh, you know. One of those things, I think look, if you look at any growth in any business, like, and we've seen it as well, like there's never doubt, but there's always fear. Oh, 100%. Like, you know that you're, like, you back yourself, like you're going to do it, but there's always that fear like, oh, fuck, what if? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like it, that's, 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 if you don't have that fear, you're probably not doing things that challenge you enough you know i'm I mean? still terrified like it's yeah and, and i think i still time. doubt you still doubt like sometimes i say this uh, like one day you wake up you're like i'm the hulk and you're like yeah fuck <laughs> yeah i got this and then the next day you wake up like oh, i do this like this is shit i'm shit i'm shit i'm shit i'm like literally though like and that's just but that those emotions will throw you into something else and something cooler and you got to go through it there's no then with no lows there's no highs so it's just like yeah so i think will highlight that that was the moment where I was like, yes, like I'm going to give it a crack and this is actually, and I this can, can do this. Opportunities and yeah. Yeah. And he said that, like you'd basically be silly not to pursue this as a, as a career. Who said that? The Rock. So, <laughs> That's so, so okay. cool. I've got, yeah, I know. I've got <laughs> questions, right? So how did, uh, how did that come about? So did you paint him and then he's like, hey, can I have that? Or can you, can you give me that? Or was it more like, did he reach out and say, hey, I, like, I love your work. Can you, is there something that you, you can or maybe paint a piece or something like that? So, he, yeah. So he saw a piece that I was doing for a client and I sort of just like, ooh, I knew. <laughs> Fuck that, right? <laughs> I Oi, if he's dead set, if he like slid into your DMs, can you imagine that moment? That is like. the fucking <laughs> wildest thing ever. <laughs> I don't share anything that, but like, it, he obviously sends me messages and. Like, you still talk to the rock. Voice memos. That's Fuck okay. off. That's, that's so like, nice. I, I would, that's quit. Just fucking quit. Like, that's it. That's, it's so that's weird because, like, I've never really been like this about, like, even when I met him, I was just so chilled. I don't know. I don't know what it is about, like, famous people don't really. Are you a big you, – do you, you watch wrestling as a kid? See, and that's the thing. I didn't. So, a lot of friends are, like, cursing me because they're like, you're not even, like, a true rock fan. I'm like, <laughs> that's why this shit happens. Yeah, exactly. That's probably <laughs> why he's talking to you. <laughs> why? It's, yeah. So he's probably sick of, like, you know. Loved him, though. Like, don't get me wrong. Loved him, what he was about. But I didn't – I wasn't there from the, the – like, obviously, I knew, knew him from wrestling, but I didn't watch, like, WWE. Like, it wasn't – yeah. So – but loved like more so his work ethic, ethic, where he'd come from, where he is now, he's like what he's about, everything, you know, how he is with his family, what he does for his mum, things like that. So there were, yeah, but most people were just like, fuck you, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't watch wrestling, like you don't deserve this. <laughs> so yeah, nah, but like best human you'll ever meet. So coming back to Kyle's question though, like how that yeah. happened, like yeah, obviously sorry, he saw it. <laughs> a, hey, it was losing it Tell me, there. tell me the thing. Um, no, but like obviously he saw a piece, but I've got a second question. We'll go to Kyle's first, but the second question is like, have you ever actually put much thought into the how the hell he came across your shit? Mm, not how, more just like why, why me yeah, kind like, of thing. Yeah. It's just like how did that line up that yeah. someone shared something and there was enough shares in place that The Rock saw your stuff? I, I did ask him about it um, and because that's what I say. Like, and this is not me being negative, but this is just me being realistic because I was always just like I'm, not, like, I'm not the best artist. Like, I'm, obviously, there's people out there that are greater and cooler and like more talented and stuff. So I asked him, I was like, why, why me? Like, why? And he goes, oh, just... Um, what do you say that like your energy and you're always smiling and stuff like that so that's what drew him yeah. to so answer that question sorry but we'll go back <laughs> we'll skip back he saw a piece that I was doing for a client uh, commented on it when I finished it 
he reshared it and said like looking forward to meeting you by this point like he'd followed me and I was just like what uh, like just yeah I think I had 10,000 followers at that point so it was pretty back early. then though that was heaps yeah and it was like early days as well so I think I think um like I mean you mentioned it before but like the value of art and you mentioned the fact that it's it has to be valuable to the individual mm. and you paint things that are relevant mm. to people and, and mean something to their life and yep. I think I mean full circle in the conversation I think that is a true representation of what makes art valuable it's yep. like someone is willing to pay x yep. for this piece yep. or someone is willing to to reach out and and get this done and yep. I think that's you know that speaks to what makes something valuable and yep. I think even in business right like 100%. a product can be valuable to yep. one person and so invaluable to another. Exactly. Yeah. I think, you know, I mean, I think it's just so cool. I mean, I'm. But I think with like with, with your art as well, a lot of it, the value as clearly stated by, by what you've just said, like a lot of the value is also not just what's on the wall. It's what, who's behind it, mm. like your story, the yeah. person, like I think that in itself adds value and that comes back to business. Like if you look at like any business model, you have the best product in the world, but if you're a dickhead, no one's going to buy it. Like, yeah, most that's of the time. A, yeah, yeah. I know you'd be lucky and slip through the cracks, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's true. And and yeah, I guess that's I try to stay true to that as well. I'm very selective with my clients who I work with because I like working with like like-minded, yeah. great people. So I've always tried to stay true to that too. If I get bad vibes from someone or someone's rude, I'm just like, my work's not for you because I literally the thought of someone having a piece in their home that like I don't vibe with I'm just like no nah, I prefer to just that's so cool yeah it's like your it would make your job so much more enjoyable I imagine as well yeah and well that's the thing like and that you know I'm not trying to be rude if I say no to someone it's literally the fact that if I don't enjoy my work it'll show in the end result <sighs> I was gonna say that like you and know. yeah you have to you have to be you know as much as saying learning to say no which you guys learn in business it's so hard to learn to say no It's only like no one's going to be there if you fall on your ass 10 years time because you're hating your work and every shit client that you've dealt with has killed your passion. So, yeah, so I've sort of put those boundaries in place. Say that again. Yeah. Say it again and again. Like like that is... Louder for the people in the back. Yeah, that is like, I mean, if there's one thing people get out of this, it's that. Yeah. And I I was going to say this before, it's like, you know, I would assume that it comes out in your work, but I think that's for everybody. Yeah. Like, if you're dealing with people that you don't want to deal with, if you're doing, if you're just saying yes continuously, if you don't enjoy what you're actually doing, the reality is, is it's not going to be successful. Yeah, 100%. Not, yeah, know. no. And I think that's where people do, like, and don't get me wrong, I've been offered ridiculous amounts of money by people who have been trying to, like, weasel their way back in. I'm like, I'm sorry, this was, I didn't, I, I never started this for the money, clearly. So I'm not going to be like bound to that now either. So that's one thing I think too, that if, especially if it's your passion, you need to draw that line in the sand and keep that separate as well. I imagine that's something that comes up often in your industry of like people just trying to chuck money, thinking money will solve the problem. Yeah. 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 So it's human psychology. Yeah. Okay. So might work for some, but yeah, not for me. Back to the rock. Right. Yep. Not, we're not going to stay on the rock, but what, what, so after that. Yep. Was, was it like a domino effect? Yeah, it, I guess. Okay, so I was traveling. So he, he reposted that, that painting and said, looking forward to meeting you. And I was just like, what? I was traveling to America anyway. I was just doing some solo travel through America and Cuba. And uh, basically, I did a painting with him like 20. I think I stayed up for like 48 hours straight and did a painting of him and his mum. Rolled it up, chucked it in a tube took it with me uh and I was in Miami I think and I still hadn't heard from him I'm like does he know I'm here da, 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 da. anyways he finally saw that I was in America got his social media manager to reach out this is a long story short by the way sort of just trying to like shove it in a yeah. little uh and then he reached out I was in Cuba at the time actually at the end of the Cuba trip I was supposed to go back to uni which would have been second week in or first week in anyways Made the leap to just say, nah, stuff it, I'm doing this. Like, I'm extending my trip. Changed all my flights. Absolutely no money at this point. I'm just going into the minus by the second because student, like... Life, yeah. Yeah, student life. So, changed all my flights. Um, I think it took me, like, four or five... He was filming um, Central Intel- Intelligence in Boston and I was supposed to fly out of LA. So, made the leap, changed all my flights um, to go to Boston. Um 
nearly lost the painting in Mexico. I was boarding the flight. I was like delusional because I hadn't slept. And I was just like, fuck, the painting. Left it in a restaurant oh. at the airport. Had to run back, get the painting. Because I was just like so tired. Because I was traveling on my own too. You're in like Mexico yeah. City. Like you're in all these like funky ass places. I was on Cu- in Cuba on my own. In Cuba, I literally, this is like the most wild story. I got to Cuba, none of my cards worked. I had no cash. I literally had no money. I had to like get someone to give me money the first night I got there. Just by chance, my third and f- third cousin was in on a random island in Cuba <laughs> with her husband who I had to fly down there and get cash off them. If they weren't there, wow. there is absolutely... Like, I was like, I'm going to sell my camera. I'm going to start selling shit. Just start to painting. Get. <laughs> Duh, I didn't think of it at that point. <laughs> That's what a skill set's for. But yeah, but like literally there was no way. I tried to go to Western Union. Nothing. Could not get money in it. So anyways, this was, this was the same trip. So it was just like wild. It was just like... It was like one thing after another. It was hilarious looking back now. Um, I survived that. Got on a little like war plane to get down to the random island. Anyways, that so after Cuba, I changed all my flights, got through Mexico. Um, didn't know that you weren't allowed to take Cuban cigars and rum through America because there was that the, the agreement wasn't between America and Cuba at that point. Mm. So I got stopped in Texas, in Houston, and like interrogated. And in a lot of trouble for obviously bringing in the legal products. And I missed my next flights because, and I was like crying because I, I never cry. And I was like, pretty like, this is not okay. I don't know if anyone's been through American customs, but yeah, they're not, not fun. They're not great. Those. Not great. And they let me actually take it, but they're like, get on the next flight to Australia. And I was like, fuck this. I'm going to, t- I'm going to Boston. <laughs> so took the cigars and everything, which was a gift for the rock. Yeah. Got there. Actually, I got to – when I got there, he messaged me and said, oh, just let me know when you're in LA. And I was like, too late. Like, I'm already on my way to Boston. So, the next day I arrived, got in a cab, went to set, and he took me around set, like introduced me to Kevin Hart, Jason Bateman, and everyone, all sitting on – like, in and out of his trailer all day, just following him around like a little fangirl. <laughs> and – um. That's yeah, nuts. gave him his Cuban cigars illegally. Woo, like survived that one. And I like, remember when he posted it, people were just like losing it. Like, she can't do that. And I was just like, oh, sucker, I'm back in Australia now. <laughs> so <laughs> probably got like a red name, <laughs> like, a, like a cross on my name. But uh, that's that story. And we, we like sort of kept in contact ever since. Then. And that's obviously snowballed Six years ago. into more opportunities as well. Yeah, well, I didn't. Yeah, well, he, yeah, like I, um, he like showed my work to Gal Gadot, like Wonder Woman. So she's like, there's been like amazing. Oh, obviously, I don't like to harass him because I know what it's like to be a busy person. So I'm not just like, hey, how you going? <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> you well? Like, yeah. So, um, you know, I sent him a voice memo when his dad passed away, and he like voice memoed back, and then I sent him one for his birthday, and he he he'll, he'll get back. But um, yeah, like just every now and then we chat, and That's I did a, a mural of him. So it was like four years after we'd met and he was just like about fucking time. Like I knew he was waiting for it. Excuse my French. I've dropped the F-bomb about like 20 times. times. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? Just a bit of passion in those. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that's wild ride. That's sick. So now obviously you said you've got like your own space now. You do your own thing. Like what's new for you? Like what's on the cards now? Obviously digital age, there's lots going on. So Let's go there. Yep. So it's been murals and they've just been getting like bigger and bigger and crazier and wilder. What's the biggest you've done? Like a 400 square meter wall. Wow. Oh, is that the... Casey Fields. It was like a stadium. I think it was about 400 square meters. But I also did, I don't know if you think of the Terminator one that was just like on the side of a building. Yeah. That was cool too. Okay. So before, before we move on. Are we okay? To, like, who else have you worked with? Uh, uh, yeah, Arnold. Arnie. Arnie. Shit. Yeah. It's crazy. I think, like, the biggest thing here for me is, like, take your opportunities. Like, yeah. you know, you, you can already, there's already two stories that you've told, and I'm like, you know, the university one, right? So, it's like, you know, obviously the, the, the three weeks where you, and even just being away, and you're like, yeah, 
fuck this, I'm doing this no matter what. Yeah. Like, I don't have any money. Yeah. Make I it work. Could get, I could fail uni. <laughs> like, there's all these in an things. American jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, no, like, I'm going to do this. And I think, yeah. like, for most people, that's such a hard thing to do. Oh. You know, like, you faced... I, I feel, honestly, like, I could say that there's times in my life, too, where it's like, you know, I had a choice and it's like, you know, maybe it's not as crazy as that, but it's like, you know, I could have either gone down this path mm. or I could have gone down this path. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that I went down this path, even though there was times where it's like, it probably almost broke me. Yeah. But I think like for people out there and, and also what you were saying before with like doing things because you love them. Yeah. Passionate, fun, like enjoy what you do. Yeah. 100%. But more so like, it's it's almost like the road less traveled. Like yeah. don't be afraid to walk that road. Yeah. Even though it's going to be, it could be twice as hard, twice as difficult not the normal you know you, you could get into a little bit of trouble a little a little a little a lot of trouble <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. i think like it's just taking those opportunities and and when you when you actually get them like uh, just doing it and, yeah. and and for the for no other reason than the experience of actually doing it yeah yeah 100 percent. that's yeah like and you're so right i look back and I literally when I think about that moment that I got held up at the airport and I was just terrified I was I was broken I was like and you, you sort of say and everyone's like yeah, yeah yeah but I know like I'm a pretty resilient person and I know when I've gotten to that point and there was a few points oh I'd say like five ten times during that trip where I was just like what am I doing why am I doing this and I'm like nah, just keep going keep going to dive in and you're like you're literally terrified and you're just like well, yeah Obviously, the easy route would have been like, no, nah, I'm just going to get on my, that plane, go home, know that I'm going to pass uni, but no, I was just like, look what comes from it. So, and here we are. Yeah. And here we are. So, the future of art then, I think, because this is one of the most intriguing spaces in the world at the moment. Um, how, where do you see it going? Yeah. So, that's, a, that's the golden question at the moment. Look, I, I can't tell the future. I want to just be clear on that, that I'm not saying that this... You don't this, have the crystal really? ball. Yeah, don't have the crystal ball. And obviously this whole thing with NFTs is wild. It's exciting. I think the most important thing to highlight is that it has given control back to creatives. And it will if, you know, as I said, I don't know where it's going to go. It could go wild for the next few years and then flop. We don't know if you don't try as well. So I think... Do you, so, so are you, I mean, without it, like, do you think that's where it could go? Like, do you see that, like, NFTs are, are really something that could be a sustainable n- new form of art for the future? Definitely, yeah. Well, I think it's like, Truly it's, exactly, it. it's exactly the same as what the conversation you had with Rock, it'd be, you'd be stupid not to, mm, right? Yeah. The industry, in every industry, is moving into a digital age. I think in general, you'd be stupid not to at least jump on the train yep. and ride it until it stops. Do you, so, I mean, because you kind of talked about it just then, right? Like, you know, the, it's almost like the decentralization yeah. and, and the putting the power back into the hands of the people who are actually creating most yeah. of that value for people. But yeah. I almost look at, and, and I mean, I could just be, this could be one of those rabbit holes that I go in, but it's like, you said that you didn't take the stereotypical route of uh, galleries yeah. and these kind of things. And I think like, for me, that almost is the decentralized path. Like, you know, maybe that could Definitely. play into the, what, what made you so successful is that instead of going through that, that route, which is all about centralization, having, you know, the best art in one place where the pers- the entity that actually secures the most value out of that is the gallery. Yeah. Um, compared to, um, or even whatever that central hub is, compared to now, you know, where you're like, well, no, like, you know, we're, I'm going to put that value into... Um, an individual's hands yeah. and, and also your own. Yeah. Because almost like if you think about it, right, what we're talking about with NFTs is there is no middleman anymore. No. Right? Where there is no that central hub. There's no but gallery you would, in the middle. You've been doing that for, for, for eight years, yeah. 10 years. Yeah. You know, you, you never had a middleman. I've and never. So you accrued the value and obviously the person who, um, you know, uh, either inquired or engaged you on that artwork. Yeah. Um, so do you think that's played a, a, a pivotal role and potentially, obviously we're talking... Glo- you know, on a global scale here where we think the world's changing but I think it's just interesting and fascinating the way your path has taken place and you're in a really primed position right now to take advantage of that yeah 100% uh yeah I think you're spot on in terms of that is like symbolic the the decentralization of, of um money and crypto and whatnot 
is symbolic to what I've done with the art world. I've never, ever, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with putting work in a gallery, but I was just like, I can do my own marketing. I can create my own connections. I can do my own networking. Why would I be giving 50% to a gallery? I put in the hard yards for this many years. I'm going to keep doing it. So yeah, there have been. That's a silly question as well with gallery stuff. Like just from the little that I know about art, which is literally the last 20 minutes of conversation, um, I imagine the gallery road would actually be like somewhat harder to create traction. It is. It is hard. Uh, look, as I said, I can't comment because I haven't been down that road. And I think for some artists, it suits them. But more them. so from like a, a, a business or a profitability standpoint. Mm. Like oh. you have to put your stuff in the gallery, wait for it to be sold, yep. wait for it to accrue value. Like yep. I feel like that's a longer road with less benefit. But Wes, you're saying that from the point we're at now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like back that's then. Back yeah. then, 10 years ago, that was the only route because, you know, Internet think about fresh you know, business like Instagram. Yeah. yeah. It's so not what it no, is. No, definitely. 100%. Like now, what? Going into a gallery doesn't make much sense. See, yeah. So there's an, there's a politi- there's, there's a lot of politics involved. I've got to be careful what I say because I know, and I still have friends who, who exhibit and whatnot as well. And it works for them. It works for their audience. It works for, um, I guess, you know, and, and I might have an exhibition at one point too. So I'm not dissonant, but I just think with with technology, with the internet, we now don't need people to turn up to see your work. You can put it on Instagram and you can c- show people worldwide. You, you literally, yeah. yeah, you have everything at your fingertips. So you don't need to rely on that gallery to be showing your work now yeah. to getting your name out there. So... I would assume, like, I mean, my mindset with it was like, you would the reason you would try to get in a gallery is because that gallery has a reputation. Hundred percent. Your artwork goes for triple, quadruple. Yeah, but now, 10X. from what you're saying, when you decentralize, you can exactly. create that reputation from the people's facility that you're putting your artwork in. For example, like if you're putting something on a wall and that facility has foot traffic every single day, that creates more tangible value. That means that the price that person has to pay for that piece of artwork is infinite. Mm. Yeah, so but, much larger. Yeah. So if you're an artist, right, like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you can get your artwork in a gallery, because we didn't have the internet, you don't have Instagram, it's hard to get your name out there mm. apart from, you know, like think about all the, you, it would literally just be through a network. Like someone might see that word painting, of yeah. word of mouth, so on. Whereas now you've got Instagram and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But, you know, the gallery, you know, it, it still adds so much value. Where it's like if you, you know that if you get your artwork into this big gallery, that has a big reputation, you know you're getting paid. And the people that they can bring there as well. Exactly. So, and it just depends on your market too. Whereas I don't think me, you know, putting me Biggie Smalls in a (laughs) gallery, I don't know if they'd appreciate it. But yeah, yeah, it's... In theory though, it's just like, it seems like a a longer road for potential more more problem in, in regards to running an actual business. But more so like, if we look at this like transition, right? Like, galleries potentially transitioning out of being popular or the norm definitely moving into more digital artwork not even like even just let's say not even nfts just you know digital artwork that people can purchase and print themselves Mm -hmm. like i feel like that now creates if we're talking about reach and the potential for people to bring in and stuff like yeah it's infinite 100 percent, 100 percent. i think i will just highlight too that we all know creatives and we're not the best like I, I, I won't speak for myself because I think I'm pr- like have learned to be good in business, but a lot of creatives are not great with business and they don't want to be. Mm. So that's probably you know the difference. Whereas I'm like I've I've trained myself to have a business mind to just want more, do more, inspire people along the way. Whereas a lot of artists just want to create; they don't want to ha- have anything to do with any of. So yeah. that's, that's that's probably very, very that probably answers like you, how to or fills those gaps where you're like, why, why would you want to? Definitely. Don't want to. So, yeah. And there's still aspects of, of my business that I, I – like, you know, there's contracts and there's there's usage rights and things like that that I try to steer away from because I know I'm like, this is killing my vibe and mm-hmm. accounting and things like that. So, but, yeah, some artists literally don't even want to quote their work. They're happy just to pump out a few pieces and let someone sell it for them. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, I hope that the, the, the new – like, NFT in this world – will i guess i I know spark that interest them to be like oh maybe i can do it myself like maybe i can just 
okay, it's not easy to mint things online. There's a bit of a process involved. If you, you haven't been... You can dip your in, toe in a bit. And you can learn. You yeah. can learn. Yeah. And like, I mean, if you've been into crypto for a while too, it's a little bit more, of, I guess, an easy process to sort of grasp. Yeah. But yeah, I hope that this new world will maybe, I guess, ignite that, that fuel in a few artists that they think, oh, I can do it on my own. Like, I can be reaping full benefits. On that note too, like this has never been a thing. If Say if I sell something that I'm going to drop next week and then the person who buys it um, sells it, there'll be ongoing royalties. Mm -hmm. So that is unheard of. Like royalties for artists has just not been a thing. And so it's giving the power back to creatives and artists and making sure that they are reaping the benefits of it for many years to come. So how do you plan to take advantage of this newfound digital world i'm just gonna dive right in now <laughs> um, only way to do it so i have created my first piece and um it's of elon he did drop a few bombshells a few weeks ago that kind of <laughs> put, yeah, yeah. kicking yourself or actually happy oh no he's kicking myself he, he sort of made a few calls that i think annoyed a few people in the crypto world so that's yeah, why i've held off and we're fine now i think we're good to go so <laughs> but for me it's like courting attention right yeah he's, he's, he's the best clever. at it it's like you know we spoke about it last week yeah like he, he you know he's not going anywhere no. people are still gonna love him like i i love him i secret like part of me is now like yeah you're a fuckwit why'd you do that but i'm still like i still love the still guy love like, you know yeah. like and i think yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to do well. I've I've kind of seen the, the piece and it's fucking cool. Yeah. I could be a bitter. There's a few <laughs> things that I, I would have changed. Like if I could, fit, like I've obviously fit the digital files ready to go. So I'm not going to go back now. I'm like happen for a reason. If I think I've made mistakes, I'm like, cool, just run with it. Like we'll fix it next time sort of thing. So there's a few things I would have changed in this piece. But uh, yeah, it's just exciting. I've got nothing to lose. Like I've had a lot of interest in it and I haven't even done it yet. Officially so, put it out. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So, so with that being said, it's like, okay, do you see this being something that you release as a once off, one and done, or you feel like it's like, okay, who's the next person of influence? Who's the next person that we could, yep. you know, potentially capitalize as an art piece? You're Def such a businessman too. I love Business it. Businesswoman, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Businesswoman. Because like, you know, I think that's something that's important too. You train yourself with a business mind, but yep. going someone like Elon and understanding that that is a business move. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So I think picking... And that's what I said before. I'm, ha I'm, I'm very happy that I have a little bit of a knowledge behind crypto. I've been into it for about two and a half years now. So if I didn't, I would have been like, huh? Like, what is this? Like, and I probably would never have taken that next step. So, yeah. So in saying that, that's probably made me realize that I have to be very selective of my audience and who I'm actually uh, selling or I guess, you know, putting – these nfts in front of and yeah i i don't want to be a one hit wonder i definitely want to follow up with a few pieces that's why i waited to make sure i had a little bit of a plan of attack going forward of who you know it might be some there's a few like on the list of i don't know if i should yeah, we'll see cool. but yeah, but yeah cool. generally like very selective like we're not painting sports peoples and things like that we're painting yeah, because you're, you're knowing the market it's like if it's like when we talk to clients about like knowing your product, like you need to know who's buying this. Yeah, thing. yeah. So yeah, I guess honoring people in the tech world, um, you know, geniuses, past, present. Um, I reckon I could have a few guesses there then, but we oh, it's been going through my head yeah. the last two minutes. We struggle with finding females. We've got. So did we? Yeah. We were thinking about trying to get a female on the wall. Yeah. I'm assuming we we're That's actually hard. hitting her up. Um, and it's hard. It's mm. real hard. Yeah, the world's changing though. I it mean, is. And, and a part of me wants to talk about this with you, right? Like, yeah. You know, um, that's a good topic. It is a great topic. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm big on it. Like, I mean, we were talking about it, and I think, I mean, I, it, it's so cool to, see, and I think this is a part of the decentralization, right? It's yeah. like it, it, what we're trying to get to is a point of equal opportunity. Yeah. Like that's what the world is moving to. Yeah. Um, what's your like? I mean, you're you'd be someone who's I guess leading the, leading that fight and and proving to to females all around the world that they can they can stand up and they can stand out. Hundred percent. It's <laughs> it's a hard it's a hard. I think we are we are progressing as a society, and I've obviously seen changes over the last ten years. And you know, looking back at what your our parents and grandparents endured um, as females, especially. I still, I've got to be honest and still say that I do face um, a lot of sexism and misogynist 
tactic, I guess, comments and calls, especially being on building sites and things like that, has improved a lot. So kudos to like, because I think people are now starting to call call people out, call on people out yeah. on it. I mean, yeah, still not enough. Like I, I, I did a course for working at Heights recently and it was me and like seven other men and my dad on the doing the course this teacher shredded me from start to finish Mm. and I was like I want my ticket so I was good look and I'm not one to not like I always stand up for myself but I was just like I just want this ticket I don't want drama get in get out still regret it because I I should have followed up with an email to the company and let them know that this is what's happening so this is where there's that that fear and that you want something and you and and that's where this needs to stop so Mm. but he was and and a few of the other guys mentioned to me in the course like oh sorry we should have said something we wanted our ticket too and they'd all sort of laugh along with it as well so and and like I said to my dad too and I'm just like there's an issue there's an issue here he obviously has an issue with women he did not bag any of the men in that like in that class I said and he goes oh well you should have said something I said no this is where you guys need mm. to call them out. He has an issue with women. He's not going to listen to me. Mm-hmm. Other men so need to call him call. out on his shit. It's, it was literally as simple as that. We did, I, like, look, I didn't lose sleep on it. I just sort of like laughed my way through it. made some you know, good friends that I still speak to in the course. But classic example. And I could tell, like before he even started shredding me, he was shredding um, some air hostess that he worked with when he worked as a in for Qantas or Virgin or something he worked for. And so I was just like, oh, like saw some red flags. And then obviously it started with me and I was like, here we go. Like, yeah. So most of the time I'd put up a fire and just sort of like give it back, which I do do on building sites and things like that. Um, do you get it often? Like when it comes to like clients, I'm sh- like you said before, if anyone's rude, you cut them off straight at the like straight at the knees. But is that something that you still see as a problem when people are actually still employing you for or wanting to employ you for service, but they still have no common decency to actually recognize that you're actually here to do a job? Yeah. Uh, yes. I've been to a few meetings recently where I sort of got that vibe um, and, and didn't feel a sense of mutual respect from the mm. client. And I did everything in my power to make sure I wouldn't do that job. Okay. So yes, definitely. Uh, where I find, like, I pick and choose where I put my energy into. If it's someone that I know and respect, I'll call them out straight away. If it's someone that I probably will never see again, I see if I can leave it. Because I know what this sort of stuff, it eats you up inside. And if you sort of put too much energy into it, you tend to be, I guess, dragged down yeah. with it. But I think so, that's also where the people around you need to come in. Like, yeah. you know, you said it before. Like, if the reality is this is one of the... The, this is a hot topic at the moment, but for good reason. And I think, you know, you can look at racism, you can look at sexism, you can look at all these things. And, like, the reality is is that they exist. Yep. And, you know, you said it before, it's like the people, we as a society, it's not enough just to, like what you said, it's like, say something, stand up for yourself. It's yep. like, no, no, like, we have to, if, if yeah. like, because I think about it, I'm like, I could have a daughter one day mm. and, like, she could come into the world and if she might not get the same opportunities that I got purely because she's a female yeah you know or she could feel that she's pigeonholed into just living a life that she doesn't want to live maybe playing a certain sport maybe not chasing a certain career path all because of the fact that you know yeah the society thinks it's okay for these things to just go on and that's kind of like you know we've had a conversation about this I feel the you know like I feel an obligation now not only to just stand up for these things when they occur, but to show my support for them. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, to we're have got, conversations like this, where it's made obvious that this shit's not no longer okay, and it's not like I think. I look. This might be my own, you know, rose-colored glasses glasses here, where I I kind of see the better of the world. But I'm hopeful that in the next few years, that the, it is now the minority of people that think this way, that think that that's still okay. And the majority start to realise and actually publicly recognise that this shit's not good. I think we're so far from that. Yeah, fuck. I think we're so far from that. I, I don't know, man. I don't know whether it's my, my uh, you know, my... Well, I guess yeah, you're the perfect I... person to ask because, like, you know, we don't obviously have to experience it exactly. personally. So, I bringing this back to you and your business and so on, like... Do you still see this as to be as large of an issue as, like, what Kyle's just said? Or is it something that you can actually see change in? And... To follow up, like, 
what would your suggestions or what would your, I guess, take home points be for other females in business trying to get and navigate through this? Yeah. I, I, I gotta, I, I'm going to follow that up again. Yeah. What can males do? Yeah. Better. What Thank can you. males do? Okay. To support, to, you know, to, to help change this, to help to what, like as an individual for someone, you know, me, who's a, as a, a, a male on an individual level, what can I do? Yeah. To help, fit, to help, you know, give to this yeah. issue. Well, I think as you said, firstly, just talking about it like this is a start because you're right, like you're sparking that awareness in people straight away. So you don't need to talk about it all the time. I think when it comes up in conversation, have a chat about it. Don't get weird about it. Just, Call you know, be you like, yep, yeah, I'm here. like you just even asking, oh, what can I do to support? Like that means that you're on board, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I do think it's gotten better. I've obviously been in this game for about 10 years now and I have worked on um, multiple building sites. I've put up with some shit, like absolute shit, like, and it's not fair. And one thing that really, really frustrates me and for female artists, you you may have noticed and, and just as a heads up for them, people don't take me seriously until I've finished the job. Why That's do you right. have to wait to give me respect when you can, you like, why? Give me respect from the day dot like they'll talk to me like shit they'll laugh at me they'll make comments and then i finish the job and they're like oh like you can actually pay <laughs> that's why they employed you in the first place oh, like idiots. and it, and then it's not even that like it, there's obviously yeah there's obviously other comments that get made it comes from both sides so i'm not just saying this is men too so there's a there's an ignorance um i guess around creative as well most jobs i'm on it doesn't like oh do you get paid for this? Like, is this your full-time job? Like, oh, what what do you do for a real job? Literally. Oh, like, cook me. just day in, day out. When I'm working in public, one after another. Like, so both both genders. I cannot be, like, I'm, I cannot highlight stress that more. I'm not having a go at men. So this is a, that's a general, I guess, um, discussion as well. Like, we can go into that. But anyways, that's, yeah, so it has gotten better. I mean, I'd worked on a building site uh, recently and they even asked me if they wanted to segregate the toilets. Amazing. All the men on site treated me with respect. There was not one other female on on site. It was me and my assistant. She's female. Amazing. No catcalling. No one looked at me funny. No one made any comments. Everyone was just like incredible from the get-go. So, yes, 100% has gotten better. But it is generally the older generations who are stuck in their ways and... You know, like even 100%. my dad, bless, like my dad, like he has never questioned me on the job sizes that I've done. He's never doubted my abilities, but even him, he's just like, oh, but like, you're okay. You can handle it. And I'm like, there's no, some no, people right. that cannot handle you it. You need to though. That's do, the problem. do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you seem to have thick skin and people think it's okay to have a little joke around and da, da, da. But there's some people that don't. And there's some people that cannot handle the constant, yeah. I guess, yeah, dragging down. So... Look, I'm not going to go into the comments and everything. I think catcalling has been toned down because I used to go for walks and, and I still do. And I still do that? Fuck, that's yeah, like... But it has gotten so much better, so much better. But I still, if I go for a walk on my own and I see a building site, I go the other way. That says a lot. That if I'm in a lot. car and a, and a group of guys pull up, I get anxiety and lock my doors. Like, it, it's not okay. Like, yeah. it's not all right. And I don't really talk about this because, yeah. I don't know, I probably should, as you said, what can we do? So back to that question, I think calling people out is the biggest, it's it's literally, yeah. Like even people who make comments about what I wear on building sites, I write back and be like, you got an issue with what I'm wearing? Like, do you expect me to turn up in heels? Like, clearly I care about the quality of my work, not how I look on site. Like, even shit like that. Would you say that to a male? Probably not. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't yeah. question it. You wouldn't even question it. So I think the, I mean... Uh, like it's definitely like I've seen it in the older generations with racism as well yep. like and, and like they're just so stuck in their ways that it's either they're too stubborn to change or um, they just can't articulate that the world is changing yeah I think the younger generation is getting much better with this stuff yeah um, and, and much more aware as well you know obviously through things like technology you know like 100%. having these conversations but yeah yeah I mean it's something that I've noticed and we've had conversations about it you know a lot. Yeah, a lot and and i think it's we got you know we're, we're trying to get i mean lockdown hasn't been great to us but we're even we might have to get you back on to discuss this again because yeah. 
we're having we've got women's month coming up in august um you know so we've got some really cool guests coming on but yeah for us it's just something that we want to be a part of it you know yeah. we want to make sure that no we're it's amazing guys our, it's so good throwing our support behind it because like you said it's it's the fact that it's accepted that is that's the problem in the first place that, yeah you know there needs to be awareness and that's where growth comes from yeah and i think yeah even having conversations triggers it in women as well like sometimes we just go about our lives and yeah sometimes people say things and after a while i'm like would they have said that to a male no like they actually wouldn't and it takes me a while to process it too so it's us realizing yeah you've been conditioned right and and wrong too and yeah so but yeah like i do stand up for myself and um and i think that's that's the biggest thing is just finding that strength knowing it's fine like just be like if you don't like what someone said you just call them out on it and you'll see pretty quickly how quick they backpedal um so yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing yeah most yeah. of the people that are doing this account either backpedal yeah. or they they like look at you like you're a weirdo like no shut up like yeah so no no that's <laughs> not how this works yeah oh look i don't know i think i think it's good to stay optimistic and say that we have made some incredible changes in the last few years but there's still a long way to go oh, such a long way to go all right we're gonna wrap it up good 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 topic to whew, yeah to <laughs> i mean it's so important it's yeah 100 so percent. yeah thanks for bringing it up so guys. um for everyone listening where can they find you so instagram danielle hey if there's one instagram you're going and checking it out it's this fucking instagram <laughs> i was literally like before we started, I was literally just scrolling like mad, stalking <laughs> your page. Like, that's cool. That's fucking cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so Instagram, Danielle's Artwork or danielsartwork.com. Uh, I guess Facebook too. I don't know if people... You even know, use that anymore? I don't know if you use that you anymore. you on TikTok? I, 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 Get okay. the fuck on TikTok now. <sighs> started it back when everyone said Gary V was like get on TikTok it's going to be the next new thing it's a fucking go to 2019 and then I was just like oh I can't wrap my head around this like this hurts my brain so I didn't but now I've, started, I've got 100 followers on TikTok guys so get on it hey we, we, we we're up to three 3,400 <sighs> in like two weeks in two weeks but how many views did what's we filled the fucking MCG with views yeah, bro yeah we That's got like epic. 150k views on some so. That's awesome there'll be some of you going up so we'll, woo TikTok, we'll, lucky we'll I, lucky we'll I got get, back on reckon, the train then. Honestly, man, I reckon the only TikTok we put up of her is her just being like, tune in. <laughs> no, stay, stay tuned. tuned. Stay, tuned. stay yeah. tuned. All right, oh. big thanks for uh, for um, coming on the podcast. Such a cool episode. Make sure everyone, you go check out the Instagram. You keep an eye on what's coming. Um, make sure you go support um, Danielle on her endeavor. Thanks, get behind guys. her and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.